We have our Topology 7 set up in VertNet uh, with our five nodes running uh, and we now want to uh, perform some web application attacks. So the scenario is that uh, node 4 is running our real web server with the MyUnic rating system. Uh, there's a router that's connecting the, the browsers to the server. So the first attack that we want to look at is a very simple cookie stealing. So the idea is that when the user on the web browser, say on node one, logs in, uh, the state information about that login is stored on the browser using a cookie. So you need to uh, study the basics of HTML, HTTP and cookies to understand how a browser and a web server maintain state information about a login, and that's using cookies. So as an attack, because the cookie, which is stored locally on the browser, is used to identify the user, if someone else can obtain those cookies, they can steal those cookies, then they could log in as that user. So then the question is, how could another user, such as a user on node 2, obtain the cookies of the user on node 1? Uh, so there are different approaches, um, and it depends upon the scenario. In real life, it may be as simple as uh, if it's a shared computer, some users logged in and they haven't uh, logged out, then the, another user can come along and steal the cookies. If uh, we didn't have access to the, the Node One's computer, then if we could access a, a device in between the browser and the server, we may be able to capture the packets sent between the browser and server and steal the cookies that way. Or we could use a more advanced attack where we have a, a web application that tries to steal the, the cookies using, say, cross-site scripting. In this demo, I want to show how we can see the cookies in the browser, and we'll do a, a simple stealing using capturing on the router, assuming our malicious user can also capture files or capture packets on the router. First, the normal user on node 1. Let's log in to our grading system and look at the cookies. Uh, normally Lynx doesn't save cookies. We can use a special config file which is included. If we just ls, there's a Lynx config file which sets it up to save cookies in a file. And if we look at that config file, it says save all cookies and save them in a file in our home directory called .lynx cookies. We'll have a look at that in a moment. So I'm going to start links, but I'm going to load the config file, which is links.cfg, and access the website for the my uni. So in this mode, links browser should uh, save our cookies, and we'll be able to look at them later. We log in. And let's say as a user, s123456, enter the password, and log in. And it logs in. It doesn't prompt us about saving cookie because it's automatic in this case, or allowing cookies. We're logged in and we can view our grades. We can view all the grades of our courses in this case. Okay, in links, there are different ways to look at the cookies. Uh, if you do control K, it shows your cookie jar. And in this case, we only have one cookie in the cookie jar and it's for the site www.myuni.edu. And some information stored in that cookie, the username. Uh, the ID hash is created by the web application, is used to uh, uh, as essentially as a hash of the username and the password so that the, the web server, when the browser accesses that web server again, the web server can identify it as the same user that accessed before. So to maintain that state information. And there are some other properties of the cookies there about the expire date and, and some security parameters. The ID hash is the important thing. That should be uh, unique to the user Anyone who has that uh, can log in as the, the current logged in S1234567 student. So a cookie stealing attack will try to steal this, these values. Uh, if we quit links, we can also see that saved in the links cookies file. 
So the cookies are saved in a file in a format where they're tab separated. So there are two uh, values here. The username is saved and the ID hash is saved. So the cookie stealing attack involves someone trying to obtain those values. Let's try it via a capture. What we're going to do is on the router run TCP dump to record the packets going between the browser and the web server when that user logs in. So on node 1, uh, let's just clear the cookies. So I'll delete that file and log in again. We'll just clear that. And in a moment on node 1, we'll log in as the normal user, but before we do that, we'll go to node 3 and let's say the malicious user has access to node 3 and they can capture the packets. So what they want to do is capture the cookie value and then they can steal it. So we can use TCP dump to capture packets and some different approaches. We can capture the packets using TCP dump and save them in a file, write to a file, and then we'll open that file in Wireshark. If you want to do it all in line, you can capture the packets and display them as, as they go, but you're really only interested in some packets, the HTTP packets. Here's a complex way to use TCP dump to capture and show just the HTTP packets. We will not try that. We'll save to a file and open in Wireshark. The interface ETH1, let's write to cookies.pcap network. We're now capturing on node 3, the router. Go back to node 1. So now the normal user logs in or accesses the website, logs in. S123456 7 enters their password, they log in. And they can view their grades. And now let's go to the capture. And the aim here is in this capture, which will stop, is that inside that capture we'll be able to see the cookies. Now in this demo it's not so good because if we look in the capture we'll see we can actually see the username and password. And a better thing than stealing the cookie is to steal the username and password. But in other scenarios that may not be possible, we may only get the cookies. So now let's look at this capture file in Wireshark. And because it's on Node 3, I need to copy this capture file from Node 3 to my host computer, my Windows computer. I'll use FileZilla to do that. And I'll connect to the local host. Username network, password network, and Node 3, 2203. Uh, and actually, I'll do it via the site manager because I need to act specify the the protocol is SFTP. By default it goes to FTP. So I'll do it here. 2203 localhost network network connect. We're connected to node 3 and we see in there that there's cookies.pcap and I'm going to download that to my Windows computer. And now we'll open that in Wireshark. So here we have our, our captured packets in Wireshark. We want to look at the HTTP packets. We'll filter on that. And we can see if we zoom in now that there are a number of HTTP requests and replies between our normal user on the browser and the MyUni web server. Now if we look closely, we'd see the username and password in there in the login request. But let's say we just captured some of the later requests, not the login. For example, this uh, query, uh, get for the query page. Let's open that and have a look. And if we look inside this request sent from the browser to the server, for the browser to identify the user each time, it sends a cookie. And inside that cookie, is the values of the username field and the ID hash field. The username is the user, uh, the student 
login. The ID hash is some representation of the, uh, a unique identifier for that user. You need to look at the, how the web application is implemented on the server to, to see how that's generated. But let's say the malicious user has learned these values now. They know the values of the username and the ID hash of another user. So essentially they've stolen the cookie. And now the, the malicious user can open up a browser, set their cookie to use these values so that they log in as this user. Let's try that. So we're our malicious user who is now on node 2. They captured on node 3. Now they're going to open their browser on node 2. And we'll use links. And we'll set the config to use the config that saves cookies. First we'll log in as our normal user. Great. So let's say our malicious user is the student s followed by seven zeros. They log in, they are allowed to log in. What this malicious user wants to do is see the grades of the other user, the S1234567. They cannot. The nature of the application is that it doesn't let one user see another user's grades, and that one student see another student's grades. So let's quit this and note that inside the cookies saved so the cookies for this s seven uh, zeros user are saved here that identifies that user but we've previously learned the, the username and id hash of the other user so let's change our cookies so here our malicious user changes the username to be 1234567 and changes the ID hash to match the one that they stole. This long one, E8, let's get this right, 76F6549F9363. AAA four nine six A F five one five six one four B eight six one four B eight and we'll save that file. So what we've done is the malicious user on node two has set the cookies that their browser is going to use to use the values stolen from the other user. We'll save that. Yes, save that. Now we'll open our browser again and it will load those cookies. And note, because it loads those cookies, which contains the username S1234567 and the corresponding ID hash, which is allocated to that user, we're automatically logged in as user S1234567. So our malicious user on node 2, our user S followed by seven zeros, has stolen the cookie of the other student user, and by stealing those cookies, it allows them to log in as that other student user, and of course, view their grades. Now a malicious user sees the grades of the other student. So that's a, a quick demonstration of cookie stealing attack. Uh, the idea is that one user wants to obtain the cookies of another user. The method we used in this case was that we, the malicious user had access to an intermediate device that would allow them to capture the packets which contain the cookies between the browser and web server. That's not always possible. A more advanced attack would be for the malicious user to have a website that uh, somehow causes the MyUni web server to send the cookies to their malicious web server. A cross-site scripting attack can, can do that.